Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are once again in the VAB, uh, further messing around with uh, stuff for Mars. So uh, this time we're going to be building out the uh, core space station rendezvous point for our uh, brave Mars explorers. And uh, basically this part of the plan includes just uh, putting this ready-made station in orbit, probably a one window before we actually uh, send an Artemis out there just to make sure that everything uh, gets there in one piece and is waiting for them safely in orbit because if uh, something were to go wrong with this part of the mission or like sending this uh, particular station out there um, the whole thing would be doomed. The Artemis can't carry enough with it uh, on the back of that J2 stage to even do a flyby before they run out of oxygen, food, stuff like that. So we're going to try to have a, uh, a fueling station there waiting for them when they arrive. So that's what we've been building out. I was just trying to get a guesstimation on how much life support this thing is going to hold, but um, without actually assigning crew to that uh, capsule that I have needlessly uh, attached to the top for the time being, it's only going to tell me the readouts for a four-person crew. But um, luckily this is my first time through. Uh, I've actually done a couple different iterations of this based on testing and uh, what our DN5 will actually be able to throw at Mars. So uh, this big tank right behind that uh, HAV module is basically all life support. <laughs> and that's not even enough to sustain them for the whole mission and give them enough to uh, top off before they come back home. So we're going to need some additional components to this already. I think my initial estimate of two, maybe four launches was incredibly optimistic. So uh, we're just throwing on some station early science there, now kind of building out a little bit of our science loadout. I'm trying to just include things that give you the most payout when you bring them home. There's no point in wasting mass on stuff that we've radioed in uh, several dozen times at this point. So I'm just trying to go with things where we'll get uh, a much higher reward, although I do know that the uh, Mars Return Project will have radioed in uh, a lot more to this stuff and maybe it'll get home sooner maybe it won't depending on how things go but uh, either way getting a having this in orbit will make it a, a lot easier to get a crew down to the surface and then back up safely again uh, for RTGs to power it. I figure they're far enough away from the crew cabin to uh, not cause an issue. Uh, we got lots of space in this four meter bay so we're gonna try to use it as best we can uh, for fuel and other necessities that uh, our crew will be needing. But uh, already having gone way past the tonnage limit, I figure that this is going to need some uh, some trimming and we're going to have to expand our launch schedule and profiles and such. But uh, trying to figure out a nice thruster layout for that, it's kind of been one of those things that's been irksome for me of all my time playing KSP, generally because I just forget to turn on the uh, center of mass indicator and on something like this the center of mass isn't actually going to shift a whole hell of a lot at least not until it's got a crew on board but it is going to be the absolutely heaviest thing that we've ever thrown at Mars um, man I'm trying to remember the missions name that we had to dive so deep in the atmosphere to aero capture but uh, it's looking like this is going to be something of a similar scenario so now we've got kind of uh, a base idea of how much life support we're going to need to be including, or at least enough to top off. It'll be interesting to see uh, how well this militia mission balloons up and what all the requirements for everything are going to be. So it will need its own propulsion because it's going to get there uncrewed and we will have to correct orbit after aero capture at Mars. So, again, thrusters, we're giving it a, a service propulsion system. And then, of course, awkward placement of uh, solar panels, comms equipment, uh, all of the other very, very necessary things. Yeah, I think I've decided down here, and we're just going to size them up so that we can just go with two solar panels versus the standard four. And since this mission is going to require more launches, we're going to need more places to dock that stuff. So um, at this time, two docking ports on the side. We might as well throw some lights on here so in case we have to dock in the dark, we've got at least something to go by. I know they're not the brightest, but they are certainly 
better than nothing. And I feel like the Skylab paint scheme up there is uh, rather appropriate, all things considered. Um, our one actual space station got randomly deleted. Not my finest hour, but it, I believe, also had the uh, Skylab paint scheme. Anyway, now, the problem of uh, aero capture at Mars. We don't actually need a whole lot of heat shields. So we're going with a much lighter, just uh, orbital rated. And then we're going to strap the DN5B underneath it. And since we've got that tank and we need to get some weight up there, we might as well fill it with uh, fuels. Anyway, this is the very first iteration of the DN5B-C, which would be the cargo version. So it's got the closed fairing up top. It actually took a lot of tinkering and figuring things out to get rid of just random problems on this launch vehicle, mainly being the uh, infamous noodle to orbit. So yeah, we'll get the clamshell on there. Anyway, it wiggled a lot and it took a lot of uh, shifting some things around moving things about, trying to get it to fly, uh, like this one did. This is probably about 12 iterations down the road, uh, where I finally got a lot of the issues with the rocket figured out, and then started uh, working on getting the weight of the uh, actual station down to about what I wanted. Or not, no, it wasn't anywhere near what I wanted. It was around what would get to Mars. So I figured just uh, pay attention to that Delta V number there for the S4B stage. I think it's in uh, number four. Yeah, it's not uh, it's not great, all things considered. So there was a lot of trimming done to actually going out there with um, maybe a third of the life support that I initially built into it uh, in this initial build. And there goes the booster set. That's always fun. And throttling back up the main engines. It behaved a lot like it was really light. Uh, except it was not, obviously. It was not the heaviest cargo we've put up on a DN5B, not by any stretch of the means, or the stretch of the word. Uh, it's a lot lighter than the uh, lunar missions we have previously launched on this, but it is by no means a lightweight, by any stretch of anything, really. But um, we did need to kind of figure out how much Delta V the transfer was going to take by Mechjeb's best guesstimations. We're looking about four kilometers per second at this next window, which is nowhere near ideal, but uh, I don't think it involves a mid-course correction. So we should just be able to burn straight from Earth, no stops, and just get there. And that would be absolutely ideal, um, because I don't think we're going to have the fuel to do a mid-course correction, uh, correct our orbit once we're at Mars, and still have anything there for which to refuel the Artemis to make sure it gets home, which is really of grave concern, and this is where that concern started. As you look at that delta V here versus how much we need to get to orbit, this thing is still way too heavy. So this was my kind of uh, solution, was to increase the number of launches on this mission. So uh, this here is the life support version. I have built another one carrying uh, Aerozine 50 and N204. Um, as a refueler, it's basically just a, an automated tug with a big tank. Uh, a big dummy tank. This one, like I said, is life support. There are other ones for fuel. And figuring that, well, um, I'm always concerned about the Delta V for the return trip, and the Artemis is pretty limited on what we can get out there with the crew. So if we can maybe give them a hand with uh, some of these tugs, or at least a tug, it's, uh, it's certainly not going to hurt our cause. Because I don't think we're going to be able to haul one of these big tanks back with us. And just one of them might be just enough to make the trip, or, or give us enough life support to make the trip on its own. But uh, it absolutely murders our Delta V. <laughs> so we're trying to avoid everything we can to take this uh, a big honking tank like this back with us. I'd like to leave them attached to the station so we can just, you know, uh, ditch them into the atmosphere when they're empty and then send out new ones because it's pretty much doing the same thing as just sending out a fuel truck to, to top them off. And so, um, just getting some of the finer details of the tug worked out, deciding to go with RTG power instead of solar, and getting very large thrusters placed on it, and because they're going to need to. It's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of weight that you're going to have to torque around and eventually dock with something. Um, the plan right now is for Mars orbit. Just do all of our rendezvous and docking out there. Although I'm starting to see the benefits of doing an Earth rendezvous. 
and instead assembling everything here and then shipping it over. The only big question mark with that is how do you aero capture at Mars when you've got all these big ridiculous things hanging off the side of your space station and you need to cut really deep into the atmosphere to perform a capture? Well, the honest answer is that you can't. You have to do a propulsive capture. How much Delta V does that going to add to the budget? And how many of these little tanker slugs are we going to have to include to make that amount of Delta V happen? And how much Delta V is that going to add to the initial transfer? Is it more or less than just increasing your launches and dealing with the headache of having to dock many, many things in Mars orbit and just trying very, very hard to get all of your inclinations right on initial approach so as to... Uh, not use all your fuel matching planes. So uh, that's about where I'm at with this whole um, Project Iron Sands. Uh, I have yet to try to build out a lander or figure out how I'm going to get it there. But if we do the Mars Orbital Rendezvous plan, obviously I'll just send it up on its own DN5B, uh, let it rendezvous in Mars orbit, attach it to the station, and then it'll just uh, sit there and be waiting for a crew to show up to uh, pilot it down. So, um, yeah. <laughs> now we're just trying to take a look at the weight and get the balance and try to figure out uh, how much of this we have to cut back on before it'll actually have enough Delta V to get to uh, Mars orbit in the first place. But anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. I hope you don't mind two build episodes in a row, but uh, I just want to keep you updated on where we're going. So that's going to do it for us today, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.